Jose Mourinho is dominating a lot of the back pages this morning. Daily Mail, Jose's red miss, the sun, red devil, penalty. Row as Jose off as United draw again with the times going as Jose sent off as United held. But I want to move on to Tottenham because you guys have spoken enough about mm-hmm. Jose Mourinho already. Tottenham beat AZ Alkmaar 1-0 last night with um, some of the papers saying Rich hits the spot where Richarlison wins this mad row to take the penalty up against James Madison in, in that. The big row was it? Well, it seemed like a bit of a, a squabble, shall we say. I was going to say, Gabby, has this ever happened to you or experienced, you know, the decision to take a penalty when two players come together and it's like, no, I'm going to take it. No, you take it. And that's basically what happened last night with Richarlison yeah. winning that argument. I've never seen that because we've always had, like, designated penalty takers like Gareth Barry, Ashley Young, Benty was penalty taker as well. So, you know, maybe last night the designated penalty taker wasn't playing maybe. So mm. it was like... Oh, we don't know who it is. Whoever gets the ball first. But you know, sometimes you just have that as a striker as well. Yeah. You wanna, oh, you yeah. wanna take the penalty. So sometimes instinct just takes over. You grab the ball. It's like it's mine. That's why you need I'm a captain right. to come come over. Whoever captain was last night and say like, no, he's having it. But I'm sure. Richardson, well, Madison was the captain. Was it? Yeah. He was. Oh, yeah. Richardson's like, no. Nope. Yeah. Well, and Richardson took read... it in the end. Yeah, but if you read the quotes afterwards, or or saw the yeah. interview with James Madison afterwards, he spoke about how he actually thought it was the right thing in the end to let Richarlison take the penalty because as a striker he needs to score to get that confidence yes. after and the injury that it was had. Richarlison's first goal for Spurs in a major European competition since scoring a brace on his Champions League debut two years ago so did from he do his... that chicken dance? <laughs> no, no I, I... <laughs> <laughs> whatever it is <laughs> yeah, I don't think he did that last night but, uh, but I suppose from Richarlison's point of view you can see why he wanted to take it to boost his confidence 100% but Madison's probably thinking as well I got taken off against yeah. West Ham at half time you know he's he's thinking to himself he's got to step it up to be guaranteed to start in the Premier League so he would have wanted it as well get your name scoring goals Madison's a better technician than Richardson as well and your captain, you know, that, that arm man gives you power. You're like, no, I'm taking but it. But again, that's what he said. He said, I was the captain last night. I made that decision yes. in the end because I thought it was the best thing for the team. That's what you want to hear yeah. from a captain, yeah. ultimately, even if there was a bit of a squabble. Yeah. A little, little, little squabble, squabble, little squabble. It's quite funny to see the handbags get out. <laughs> um, the Spurs are second in the Europa League yes. table, winning three from three. Lazio lead the way on goal difference. But, Gabby, how far do you see Tottenham going in this competition? How do they prioritise this with, with top four aspirations? They were favourites before the competition started, which was our family strains with Manchester United in it. But Spurs, I think they'll, st- they'll still be favourites. Great start. They need to win a trophy. Okay, I think top four would be great, but these fans are tired of um, being bantered by the clubs. You know, haven't won a trophy mm-hmm. in this long. Spursy last season um, falling short. I think they lost to Fulham in the Carabao Cup. They need to stay in all these competitions and give themselves a chance and go hard mm. in every competition to win something because. These Spurs fans really, really are tired of being laughed at. Oh, that leads us nicely on, being yes. tired. <laughs> yes, it yeah, it's does. very tiring, this football. Very poor, tiring. Poor players. So there's also a, su- a story in The Sun with uh, the headline, Tired Phil Foden burnt out like Rodri. As he's revealed, he suffered the same burnout as his Manchester, Manchester City teammate Rodri. So he's claiming that he played 69 games last season. And even though he's saying, you know, I, I had the Euros, didn't he? he? even looked leggy at the Euros and he had such a big season. I mean, Gabby, we're talking about player welfare. And also when you think about what's about to come with yes. the Club World Cup in June and July. I mean, where do you sit on this? Do you think the players have a right to speak out about their welfare? Because it just seems as though the manager, the matches are just going to keep increasing. I think the problem you've got, though, is, is if you look at the, the games he played, 35 Premier League games, you expect to play that as one of the best players. Champions League games you want to play. Played eight games in the Champions League. FA Cup, maybe is a competition you'd say, can I get a bit of a rest in? He played five in that. Club World Cup, you don't need it. EFL Cup, he only played one match. UEFA mm. Super Cup, one match. Community, Community Shield, one match. Maybe it's the friendlies for England that add up as well. Five friendlies for England, then seven games in Euros. That's 12 games for England during the season. But he's going to want to play for England. No, that's the problem. It's hard to... It's, I want to defend the players, but then, like, when they're not playing, they moan. And then when they do play too many games, but all them games I've, I've read out, you'd say four or five games don't need to be in there. The Club World Cup and UEFA Super Cup, but the other ones, you want to play every Premier League game, you want to play every Champions League game, you want to play every game for England, especially in the Euros. 
So it's hard, isn't it? Maybe. Is it yeah. on the managers or the players? Because the players could say, look, I'm feeling really tight. Can I sit this one out? Which naturally they wouldn't do. But also they're, they're, they know what's going on with their body. Or is it on the managers to be like, well, look, I've got a huge squad. Time to rotate. You are sitting this one out. But it's difficult when you're in such unbelievable form like Foden was. How do you leave him out? They're your best players. You want to keep playing, don't you? The league's very tight now. It's hard to, to rest players. But I just look at it and like... You've been through that last season, no problem. This season, Pep's not played him much because he is so tired. So maybe that's a sacrifice you have. You have a long season, one season, the next season it's shorter. But it's hard to side with the players when, you know, they want to play these games, you know? Mm. What would you do if you were playing now? If I was playing now, I'd ask for um, a trip to Dubai every special <laughs> break to rest my legs. I want a um, massage every day. No, I think I think I'd, I'd want to play every game, but how can you go to a manager and say I'm tired it's going to take a brave player to say that some of the managers nowadays Gaffer I don't want to play got Bournemouth on the weekend can I just sit that one out I'm tired they're never going to do it are they especially at Phil mm. Foden's young age mm. maybe the older you get you'll have you'll you'll be looked after but maybe it comes down to physio sports science can they look at the, the minutes and maybe have a word in the managers but si over 60 games is a lot isn't it during the season yeah and then I suppose how seriously are managers going to take the Club World Cup this summer I'd, 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 honestly, I'd play players that haven't had much football. You know, if you're Man City, for instance, you've got someone like Nunes who doesn't play much for the club. Um, other players in there that aren't getting time. Is it McAtee? I'd play players like that. You've got to rotate because the big, big competitions are the Champions League and the Premier League, aren't they, for Man City? But you do realise there's a lot of money at stake for this new Club World Cup. Mm. I think the winners get around 100 million. Just Pardon? 100 million. Oh, wow. You get fifty million for just competing. Foden, from what I was reading. <laughs> Foden, I think out that's you go. what it is. I, I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm pushing I'm out just, the tunnel. Go on, on you go. I am just go. looking into it once more, just to clarify. But I'm sure I read that. It's, you Foden's get 50 out million there with like part of it. bandages on his legs. Yeah. So the, <laughs> the total prize money they're suggesting is two point five billion. That's the total prize money. So oh. it's very difficult now for clubs to turn around and go. I don't know if we should take that seriously anymore. Or they're 50 million just for entering. But then when nice. do players have a break? Because obviously the season goes, oh, if you're up until the I Champions know, yeah. League final, it's like the 1st of June, and then this starts mid-June up until mid-July, and then it's pre-season. So there is no break. I think the problem as well is a lot of these players play internationals, so you don't get the rest during the international breaks. When mm. I wasn't involved in England, you'd always get four or five days. Most clubs do. And you'd get a little quick break, like the Ben White to Dubai <laughs> he's there every you, every uh, test I break. suppose the only thing you can say is this Club World Cup it has to be your pre-season really yes. essentially yes. that's the only yes. way you can look at it um, but yeah but, I mean, but you'd hope this season work, as well though there's no tournament at the end of the season these players are probably thinking like this is the season 2025 summer to get your seven weeks off and just rest World Cup following year but no you've got this competition for um, a couple of the teams just yeah. don't need it do they Not it'd be nice to finish the season and be like alright Mid May, yeah. whenever it is. This See is later. my chill yes. time. This is the one season. Although of the you say off. that players don't tend to chill as much as they might have used, you know, back in the day, because yes. you might have two weeks off and then they still they get back into their pre pre season. Yes, doing it, yeah, doing all doing their, their little, running, uh, yeah. yeah, in Dubai. I thought you were going to say, oh, they go off to Ibiza. I was like, no, no, yeah, they're, well, they're, 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 they're having a little break. They're, 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 absolutely. <laughs> they're, what do you think, Katie? Do you feel do you feel sorry for these players? You feel sorry for Foden? Is it hard? I mean, sixty nine games sounds exhausting. Yeah, let's see what happens with the Club World Cup. I yeah, think that's interesting. That will be a, another interesting factor bringing into all of this. Katie, for now, thank you very much. You. Talk Sport Breakfast, waking you up Monday to Friday morning from six a.m. on AM on DAB via the Talk Sport app and on your smart speaker. Talk Sport.